in preparing for today's show, Ricky was telling me on the phone that he can do a flying geese with one seam. And I'm like, get out of here. So she challenged me to show her, and I decided to show everybody. So this is something that I learned from a group of quilters in England several years ago. So I want to show you how to do this. Great. Okay? The one seam flying geese block. Now what, I, what I've done, of course, you know me in my colorful fabric. I'm actually using two fabrics. I'm using a multicolored hand-dyed fabric that we do here in the studio. I'm also using a dark fabric that's from my new Red Rooster fabrics. All right. This is one of the commercial darks. And I have cut a strip from the uh, multicolor fabric that is three inches wide. I've also cut three inch squares, and you can see a stack of them, three inch squares from my sort of multicolored dark fabric. Now, of course, you could use any colors Absolutely. that you like. So but I just, like these. I'm just using what I like. So the three inch squares are easy for you to know. Those are, those are done, and I'm going to take my multicolored fabric, and I'm going to cut of course, it's three inches wide. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut five and a half inches. So let me just... Of course, three I'm, by five and a half. Three by five and a half. And I will tell you, I'm a, I'm a line person sometimes. I like using my ruler on the lines. No, no, I, no. You're not supposed to do that. You're I Ricky Tan. I, <laughs> I know. I'm cutting with the ruler. Okay. And, <laughs> and I'm measuring. But one, two, three, four, five and a half. So I'm also not supposed to cut towards me. But since the iron's in the way, and I am a professional, <laughs> a trained professional, trained right? professional. I'm going to cut that five and a half inch rectangle. Now, Alex, it's supper time. It's time for us to make some sandwiches. We're going to take two of our three inch squares. Okay. We're going to take our five and a half inch, fold it in half, and we're going to put the fold at the top. In other words, it's facing away from me, but I align the raw edges near me. All righty. Okay. So as you can see, the fold does not make it yeah, it's all shorter. the way. It's what about shorter. a quarter of an inch or even and less? That's what maybe? I'm looking for. Oh, okay. Quarter right. inch is basically what I'm looking for. I fold that in half. This is my first piece was right side up. Mm -hmm. My folded piece is folded wrong sides together, mm -hmm. by the way. Good stuff on the outside. Absolutely. And now I'm making the sandwich by closing it up with the wrong side on top so the right side is facing down. And we're just going to sew a quarter inch seam along the right. And I should say, you're going to That's do that. That's right. You me. told me to get busy. And this is the one time you do care about a quarter inch. I do. I sure do, because I want these blocks to finish. You actually commented accurately. on mine, which I thought was rather strange. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're doing a very good job. Thank you, Mr. Tim. So the nice thing is that you can make your little sandwiches and you have them all stacked up. Make sure that you get them oriented in the right direction. Yeah, and you were real clear about that. Make sure that the fold. The fold is at the top and right. it's tucked in a quarter inch and you just whiz those right through. Now, of course, you want to make sure you've got plenty of bobbin thread when you're doing this <laughs> because you could do about 100 50 of those, and they'll all end up on the floor in a jumble with no stitching Ricky, at that's all. A, that's a freak of nature. Okay. That, you know, you've been chain piece, piecing for about what, you know, half hour, and you have no and thread. You look down, that's yeah. right. All right, so we've got these now, and what I want to do is I want to slice them into little bits so that they're all separated. And I'm going to take one of them now and just show you how this opens up and presses. All right, we're going to open it up. I've got the fold away from me again. Mm -hmm. I like to just open this up and just press it first to get the, the top part of the bread of the sandwich off okay. to the side. And then take your flying geese, the little segment that's going to be that, and you'll just open it up. Wow. Don't you hey, love that? Hey, hey, hey. All right. Make sure that point comes right to the corner. Give that a little bit of a press. Come up there. And not only do you have a one seam flying geese block, but look, you've got little pockets mm -hmm. to put dimensional flying, the geese. dimensional flying geese. So I have to thank my wonderful English friends for teaching me that. Well, thank you for I, teaching <laughs> us that because I, I couldn't believe it on the phone. I couldn't believe it's it. It's great, isn't it? And then you can make these oh, by the hundreds mm -hmm. if you want to. And then you can just play with them and stack them however you like. I have stacked them up. I've staggered them. Can you see that I've staggered them there? And you could, if you like, you could make them more typical where they're all 
in rows. Sure, so you, you could do, do tons of things. Lots of things that you can do with this very simple block. Now look at the quilt that I made. This is called Flying Colors. Uh -huh. And you can see that I've actually used some little half inch sashing strips between uh -huh. the uh, geese and also on the between the rows as I sewed them together. Now you are not going to give everybody the instructions on the quilt, but on the piecing part because you're all about creativity. I'm all about creativity. So if you look at the picture and you want to duplicate mine, that's fine. But I think you should take these fine flying geese blocks and just play with them, have fun, make your own quilt, however small, however big that you want to make it. And of course now look at the full size image. Right. The full size quilt shows you how this one's laid out and that I've put some nice little borders on it with some very fine little details around that. And that was a fun quilt for me to make and it did not take long at all. I know. I, You proved it. Okay. You proved it, buddy. All right. So did you like that? Yeah. Good. All right.